According to the latest Pew Research, while 20% of American Jews go to synagogue monthly, 72% sometimes or often cook or eat Jewish food. And in her best-selling parenting book, The Blessing of a Skinned Knee, Dr. Wendy Mogul describes Judaism as a table-centered religion. Food connects people to Jewish community, legacy, and land. Food is about more than sustenance. It represents memory, benevolence, love, that of the people who prepare the food, which is historically mostly women, and that of God. Yet food is also fraught. We fear that we're eating too much. We are agitated that our loved ones eat too much or too little, or too much of the bad foods and not enough of the good foods. We distrust food, and we distrust ourselves around food. Judaism offers a lot of guidance in what we should eat, and less well-known is our tradition's wisdom in how we should eat. A verse from this week's Torah portion reads, you shall eat and you shall be satiated and you shall bless Adonai your God for the good land that he has given you. This verse begins with a rhythmic list of three verbs, ve'achalta, ve'savata, uverachta. You shall eat, you shall be satiated, and you shall bless. And each of these three verbs articulates a Jewish principle about how we should approach food. It is fitting that this verse was incorporated into the Birkat Hamazon, the grace after meals, because each of the three verbs contains great wisdom. Let's begin with the first, Ve'achalta, you shall eat. This is perhaps so obvious that it goes without saying, but the Torah says it, we're going to eat. The promised land is a land of food. Specifically, this parsha enumerates a land of wheat and barley, of vines, figs, and pomegranates, a land of olive trees, olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat food without scarcity, where you will lack nothing a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy's promise is an articulation of an ideal rather than a description of the reality of any time period. In our world, resources are unevenly distributed and not everyone has enough food. So the charge, ve'achalta, you shall eat, reminds us that we cannot take the presence of abundant food for granted. To have enough food is a blessing. And therefore, Judaism teaches that eating should be joyful. Food is celebratory. In Ecclesiastes, we read, go eat your bread in gladness and drink your wine in joy. The prophet Nehemiah instructs, go enjoy choice foods and sweet drinks. Thus, joy is the first principle of Jewish eating. The second principle, visavata, you shall be satiated. Eat until you are full, the Torah instructs. Our mealtime mission is satiation, not getting by on as little food as possible. The verb visavata evokes expansiveness and overflow. And if Egypt is the narrow place, the place where our bodies were constricted, in the promised land, we will have all of the food we desire. Not just meet our caloric bare minimum, but relish in food that brings us joy, food that makes us want to linger over the dining table. And when we are satiated, we will stop. We won't be over full past the point of comfort. Satiation means neither under eating nor over eating. Yet, Honoring our body's hunger and fullness cues is hard. For many people, eating is not intuitive. 
This is particularly true for those who lack the appetite that the Torah insists we respect. What about people who have lost hunger cues through eating disorders, depression, or other illnesses? The Shulchan Aruch, the most widely accepted Jewish legal code, articulates a relevant principle. He who has a disease from hunger, the symptoms are that his eyes are dark and his eyes cannot see. We feed him until his eyes light up. In other words, sometimes a person is so sick that they neither eat nor feel hunger. Sometimes a person's eyes cannot see. They cannot see themselves accurately. They cannot feel their body's hunger or both. Perhaps their mind and their body have become untethered. And when that happens, others are obligated to step in. We feed the sick person until their eyes light up again. We help them eat until they can see and feel again. The third and final verb in our verse from Deuteronomy is uverachta, you shall bless. Blessings make us slow down to appreciate what we have been given. To cultivate and preserve awe for God, we articulate gratitude. We say, thank you. Each person is called to these three charges. Ve'achalta, you shall eat. Ve'savata, you shall be satiated. Uverachta, you shall bless. In eating, we rejoice. In satiation, we eat without artificial restriction or excess. And in blessing, we express gratitude for the one who provides us with food. And through these three principles of Jewish eating, we move towards the ultimate goal for eating, to make our table an altar. Jewish tradition teaches that the dining table in each home represents the destroyed holy altar in Jerusalem. Rabbi Ismar Shorsh, Chancellor Emeritus of JTS, explains how the dining table, like the altar at the temple, is a locus of reconciliation. According to the Talmud, during temple times, we atoned through making sacrifices at the altar. And now we atone at the table. Our sages explain that the work of repairing relationships with guests we welcome to our table is as sacred as offering sacrifices on the altar. The altar, and now the table, is the site of coming together in peace, of committing to being in relationship, the site of reconciliation. I pray that we cultivate joy, satiation, and gratitude in our eating and make our tables such altars of reconciliation. May we all find true reconciliation over our meals reconciliation with our loved ones, reconciliation with food itself, and reconciliation with our bodies, whatever shape they may take. Shabbat Shalom.